Hello, world. I am Claire, and today I will be sharing with you more information I received from the 25th dimension during my last BQH Beyond Quantum Healing session, hypnosis session with Lorraine, my hypnotist. So before we move forward, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. Please give this video a thumbs up and also leave me a comment below to let me know if the stuff resonates, what is going on in your corner of the planet, because we are just going through a bunch of different stuff. So I am really curious to hear how everybody's coping with the changing energies and whatever other craziness is happening we're witnessing right now in the last days on this uh, in this place. All right, so I'm going to start reading here from the transcript. When I refer to Lorraine again, she is the hypnotist who was asking me questions that I prepared in advance of the 25th, unless, you know, she comes up with a, a question and she will say so if she does. And when I refer to me, I'm referring to myself under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from the 25th. All right, let's jump in. Lorraine, why is 12 a sacred number? What does it even mean to be a sacred number? Isn't everything sacred? Do you mean sacred inside the matrix or at the level of the 25th? And this question was spurred by the fact that apparently we have 12,000 light workers here, as in the, what everybody knows by the term 144,000, there's truly only 12,000 individual essences. Um, and, uh, and the reason there is only 12,000 or there is this 12,000 number is because 25th has is plain 12 is a sacred number. Me. So everything is sacred, right? By sacred, we mean that is something that is related to source, that we celebrate as source. We are source and we like to remember that we are source and we use certain things to remind ourselves of, of who we are. And this is one thing sacred numbers do for us, just like sacred geometry. The fact that we remind ourselves how we set up the universe, the multiverse, reality, the real reality behind what we believe to be reality here. And so in that sense, it is sacred, yes. Now, it's not sacred as in limitation, like you know. Like we would talk about religion. Oh, you have to be careful or you're going to be so disrespectful. We don't mean it like that. We mean in a celebratory way. We like to think, we like to honor certain things because again, they are symbols of the real reality, you know, source, et cetera, et cetera. And so we do, we have created this. There are things in the universe, like the music, like, you know, things that are real that we're used to create, that we have used to create. And this is what we mean by sacred. So the number 12 is sacred in that sense because we've used the number 12 as we use the other numbers to create certain things because we like it. It's simply that we like it. Do we have to have that number? Do we have to use this number? Does the reality, the way we create reality have to use that number? It doesn't. That's just how we created it. It's like when we talk about the Fibonacci sequence, does it have to be that way? No, we just think it's super cool that there is this order. We created it on purpose. <coughs> we created it on purpose like this so we could go in there and find a code and wonder and be transported and be like, wow, this is so cool. And that's all. That's what it means that the number 12 is sacred. There's nothing scary. It's not like, Sometimes when we hear the word sacred, we think of religion. We think of something scary like, oh my goodness, you gotta give it its due respect. There's nothing like that in the matrix. There is nothing like that in the multiverse. There is nothing like that in reality, in source. As source, what are you gonna be scared of? Yourself? So 12 is just another something cool that we like to use. And what we like to think of, and that reminds us that there are things that are spiritual. That's all. It's a code. It's just another code. I love when they say, what are you, you as source, what are you going to be scared of yourself? <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Lorraine. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> Every time I start doing these videos, I have coffee and fits. Oh, my goodness. Lorraine. Thank you. 
I am so grateful that I didn't have the religious dogma imposed on me in this lifetime. Okay. Do we hold beliefs at the 25th dimensional level where we would believe in the 12 being sacred? Me. No, we don't have limitations of any kind. So we celebrate source. We celebrate creation. We celebrate us and the fun we're having because we're happy. We're having fun. We're grateful for existing. We don't have to do a ritual or believe in certain things. We have no beliefs of that kind. We know exactly what's happening. We know who we are. So no, it's not, we don't believe that 12 is sacred because 12 somehow is an outside item that is sacred and oh my God, where is it coming from? We are source. What more than source do you wanna be? You know, there is nothing outside of us that's more important that you gotta give your respect to. We are grateful for source. We are source and that's all we celebrate. And number 12, like there are other things that are sacred or that we like to think of as sacred is simply a remembrance, a symbol of all the fun things that we've had at our disposal that we used to create with. Lorraine, it seems to me that at the 25th, we would have no beliefs, we would just know. Me, exactly, exactly, we just are. It's not even that we just know, it's that we just are. We don't have to have anything at the 25th level, we just are. Lorraine, Thank you. Many from old earth are bypassing having to deal with what we've done here by either continuing to ignore it by going to hang out with the aliens where they can say it was the dark that screwed up or by going to 3D chambers where they can believe that it was their ancestors. Why are we the only ones who have to look at things and say, we did this? And I want to explain the background to this question before I give you the answer from 25th. There is a lot of uh, wondering among us and among the people that do comment under these videos in the group um, where the people going to New York are the only ones who are going to remember we're going to have no veil there. And so we're going to remember what we've done here. We're going to be consciously aware of what's happened on this planet. The fact that we have supported this, okay, all of us, whether you think you're good and you've never done anything bad, whatever the, the case might be. Oh, there you definitely, you might've done some quote unquote bad things, but obviously you haven't done the most extreme, horrible things that some of the dark have done. Um, and so the people going to hang out with the aliens, they will still have a veil because the aliens have a veil. You know, people in the matrix want to believe in the game, just like we do. There's no difference between us and the aliens in that sense. And, and people going to 3D chambers, they'll read about some of the stuff that's been done, but they will think it happened 50, 60 years ago. So they'll think of it like we might think of the Spanish Inquisition, like, oh my gosh, what those barbarians who were they doing, right? It wasn't us. And uh, even though a lot of the people in the 3D chambers, they, they not only participated as much as everybody else here, but they also, they might've been some of the people doing these things. <laughs> like literally they were the ones doing that, you know? Uh, they might look at governments and say, oh my God, these politicians, and they might be the person who was a politician because again, they're losing time and time doesn't work the way we think it does. So they're going to think this is history when in reality it's, it was them here. And again, no judgment. We're all here playing again. But so the question is, a lot of us are wondering, I mean, why do we have to deal with the weight and the knowledge of the fact that we have participated in this? Not only, we're not just going to know intellectually, we're actually going to relive these things we're going to be there. We're going to see what's happened, what's transpired on this planet, uh, you know, in terms of torture of animals or whatever else it might be. And so uh, this is coming up a lot. So I wanted to ask the 25th. So me. Because the truth is, we're going to have a blast. And a lot of us are really are ready to have a blast. That's it. This is new, so many wanted to continue what they know, which is absolutely and perfectly fine. The vast majority of the matrix wants to stay in the game. We're gonna wanna be back in the game. So we are grateful that the matrix is holding on to its beliefs. Oh, excuse me. And they were laughing here. It's just that there are some of us that were just tired that we wanted this freedom, this extreme freedom. And we were like, when we were told, okay, there's a new game started, we jumped head first and said, we're gonna do this. We don't care that we have to integrate what we've done. It is nothing to us. 
Does it mean it's not going to cause some emotional upheaval? Yes, it is. Because we go there as we are now. Lorraine, if you're going to get there tomorrow, you're going to be able to know everything about all your existences and everybody else's existence. It's going to be a lot. It's not going to be something that you're going to be like, okay, that's cool. It's going to be a lot. But is it really, at the end of the day, a big deal? You're going to be there for like 5,000 years. You're going to have a blast. So yeah, that's why it's a great game. And we wanted to play it. So we're just the first ones going there. Many people will go to New York over time. Lorraine, fantastic. Okay, this is a question about time. You've explained time by saying that there is a before version without new earth and an after version with new earth. And she means versions of the matrix. But if I wanted to go back and see the versions in the now as they are now forever available, I would find a sequence, a before and after. So how do I see that sequence or think of that sequence? What is it that would make me realize the fact that the version without old earth comes before the version of the universe without old earth, but with new earth? Me. So from a 3D perspective, as long as new earth exists, you're gonna be able to say, okay, so if new earth exists now, this version of the universe of the multiverse where there is a new earth, a new old earth, it's gotta be now. <coughs> <coughs> but the fact is there is no time. So you're not going to know the sequence. Everything is happening at the same time. So the version of the multiverse without old earth with new earth is equal, is happening at the same time as the version of the multiverse without new earth and with old earth. So really, if you're coming from quote unquote the future and you're looking at the two and say that new earth didn't exist anymore for whatever reason, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They're both happening, happening now, old earth, even though we're taking it down. If you wanna go back to experience it, it's there. How do you know when it happened? You don't, you're experiencing it now. I don't know when I became source and I witnessed the intention for the takedown. I don't know when that happened because it's happening now. It's happening right now. While you and I are here chatting, it's happening. Source is willing that. So we think of sequence again. Here we like to think of sequence. In reality, there is no sequence. There is no... While there are different versions, they're happening at the same time. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference because they're both happening right now. And then when I explain this reference they made to the fact when I became source, they're referring to uh, my second plant medicine experience. And I made a video about this if you want to go and check it out, where I <coughs> not only connected to source like in my first plant medicine experience, which I also made a video about, but I became source and I got some new information out of it compared to the first time. Lorraine, and I apologize for the coughing, but there's a lot of energy that's clearing while I do these videos. And in fact, I'm gonna have, let me see if I have my bottle of water here. Have a little water. I don't have water, but here we go. Sorry guys. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Otherwise I'm not gonna make it through this thing. I'm getting into a coughing fit. Okay, now it caused an earthquake. Okay, Lorraine, in the 3D chambers, the programs will be pleasant, the way life should have been on this planet. It's funny how we can figure it out now, but couldn't for some reason on this planet. I wonder if this is because we have learned our lessons here or because even if we had reset this way, the dark would have reset again and this wouldn't have lasted me. So yes and no. Yes, we just discussed this. There is... We have tried to introduce certain things that have been squashed, but again, we wanted, we all supported the dark, a lot of dark ideas. So we really wanted it to be this way here. So it's not just that, oh, we tried. I mean, we did try, obviously. We tried to salvage this, but again, we weren't able to salvage it because all of us or most of us were interested in certain ideas. So while we wanted to do certain things, we always, we also, wanted to keep certain other things. And so in that sense, we wanted those lessons here, but the word lesson is key here. It's not that we have learned so much because again, it's an experience. Yes, we learned that we don't like it. We don't wanna do this again, 
because it ends up not being fun, okay? So it's not a lesson as in, I'm much wiser now, okay? I'm a better person now. It's not that. It's a matter of saying, we already played this game and guess what? That was really, really boring. We don't want to play it anymore. In this sense, we've become, we've learned the lessons. We've learned simply the lesson is that this kind of game, eh, let's not do it again. That's all. That's the extent of the lesson. So it's not that in 3D chambers they've learned something so they have better programs. It's that simply they have done this game and are not interested anymore. The aliens already are not interested in this type of game. That's why they weren't here incarnated on Earth with us. They had the chance. Everybody in the multiverse has the option to incarnate anywhere. They clearly weren't interested in this. We were interested in this and we are no longer interested. So all of us, not just the people going to 3D, all of us are moving on because we are not interested in this. So it's not that they, you know, we could have done this here. Yes, we could have. But at the same time, but at the time we were interested in having this experience, even though it turned out to be crap. We were interested. That's why we had it. It didn't just happen. And now we just, all of us have decided, well, that's done. We're not interested anymore. And that's all that's happening. So in 3D, just as much as with people going with the aliens, just as much as people are going to come to New Earth, we're all going to have better experiences because we decided the stupid game over here is like, blah, no more. That's all. <laughs> Lorraine, thank goodness. <laughs> so Claire is thinking of a movie, The Lord of the Rings, in which a powerful white wizard becomes evil. Knowing how God is not all love and light and having felt how disappointed the source is in this game, I can see how easily we could think that we can just end something we don't like, but then we risk becoming the destroyers. You've told us that the solution is that we will learn to just observe and accept. Does this mean that we will always be neutral? So should something else go wrong in the matrix, we will stand by and not intervene no matter what? Would there ever be a reason for us to intervene or something so egregious that we would stop or reverse? Or would we simply let the 12,000 do what they do like in the past and past is quote unquote, there is no past, me. Yes, yes, that's what we'll do. We will, so we will be able, we as gods basically is what source does. Source would be able to take this all down in a second. If we as source decided to take down the matrix, we could do it in a split second. So we don't want this, obviously. And so we on New Earth are going to have the same reservations. We're going to have the same self-constraint. We're not going to mess with the game. Because again, even from a self-interested perspective, because again, at the end of the day, we're all one, we don't want to destroy the matrix. We don't want to destroy the belief in the game. Because after we're done with New Earth, and we get bored of being gods, we do want to go back to the Pleiades and believe that we have limitations, right? And so for that reason, we'll not intervene. And if something gets unbalanced, we have systems in place. We've always had them. And so we'll let the 12,000 know, sound the alarm. Nothing is changing. Now, do the 12,000 have more experience? Yes, they do. All of us have more experience, but that's it. That's the only difference. We are not going to be like Lorraine. You're not going to look at the playlist and be like, I'm going to fix this and that because this is going south. You're not. You're not going to get involved because one, they might have not asked you to. And two, you want them to have the experience that they want to experience. You will never take that away from her, from them. I'm sorry. You're never going to take that away from them. Lorraine, fantastic. Great. Thank you. When did Jesus come here during which reset before or after we decided to take this down 300 years ago? If before, was it because this was already going wrong? So he tried to fix it? Me. So he came here during the second to last reset and we had not decided to take this down yet. However, he was a watcher and he decided he was going to try certain things. And obviously we know how that went. And yeah, so we hadn't decided. We we're still trying to salvage this game. He was obviously, 
he was obviously on the team of the light. So we on the light do certain things to recalibrate. And he was very much aware of his power of what we can do, what we can all do. But again, we already spoken about this. We've tried to do lots of things that haven't worked because really we, just as a collective, were mostly interested in experiencing what we've experienced. And I'm not saying we want to have the extremes we've had or that the extremes we've had are justified. We already said many times they're quite unfortunate. We have done a lot of things here that are quite unfortunate, but we wanted to experience certain things. And so there have been many actors as in many people will try to do to fix, to rebalance things. And Jesus being one of them, he wasn't the only one that we just didn't, we didn't want to, we just weren't interested. Lorraine, thank you. So you told us that he was a watcher. And as a watcher, why did he do what he did instead of leaving the job to the 12,000? Me. So as a watcher, you're just, you're on the team of the light. And you're just, actually, I was asking the question, if all watchers are on the team of the light. And yes, they are. And so as a watcher, you're still on the team of the light. So as anyone on the team of the light, you still do things with you. And you know this, even you yourself, I mean, you know you do certain things with your energy. You're aware. One of the things you do is you ground and you absorb a lot of energy and integrate it for the collective. Jesus had his own thing that he did. It's a thing. It was his thing, which wasn't just spreading. It's not just what he did from a 3D perspective where it was spreading certain information. Because again, we know there were codes in there and everything else. But he also, with his own energy, his own vibration, the way that he was, he also was fixing things. And his vibration was so high that we actually felt it as well. And he was trying to show us certain things, like with miracles and so on. So yeah, as a watcher, your job, what we consider a job, what we consider a duty, is to alert the multiverse. That doesn't mean that then you wash your hands of everything. You're still a person of the light. You're still incarnated into a place. So of course your energy will be added to what is happening, but you're not one of 12,000, that's all. That's all we said. It's the 12,000 that come in and try to do certain things specifically. But everybody who's on the team of the light is always trying to fix things and balance things. Me, I'm sorry, Lorraine. Yes, we are, okay. Would he have done what he did anyway if the game was not going south? Me. If the game, he would have actually, because it's a game at the end of the day. So we do something, they do some things. So yes, he would have done it. He just probably wouldn't have ended the way he did. So yeah, he would have done it anyway, because this is what he wanted to do. This is what his essence wanted to do. The essence is always free. So if somebody else wanted to come in and play Jesus these days, they could except obviously nobody's interested in doing that anymore here because again, one, the polarity is so negative. And secondly, we're moving on. But I mean, we have had other people, other personages, other characters that have played roles like Jesus. You don't have to be Jesus to play that type of role. And we've had many great people playing that type of role. Lorraine. Okay. This was Claire's original question. So I'm going to ask it anyway, even though you already... Uh, answer that. It, it answer that uh, she's referring to the fact they already said that Jesus came in before um, we decided to take this down. If he came after we decided to end this, was his intervention part of the fixes the 12,000 tried to do before deciding to take this down? Then they reset on him. So his plan failed. Me. Yeah, no, they did reset on him. Again, we did have one reset after that. And the plan did fail because every time we try to bring in a light or do things of the light, the dark has figured out how to reset. So they reset again. But yeah, it's not, it wasn't one of the 12,000. And so this wasn't part of the fix as in what the 12,000 came to do. But it was definitely helping. I mean, very powerful, very aware of his power. But it did not come in after we decided on a takedown. In fact, one of the reasons we decided on the takedown is what happened with what he did. Like he brought in all this information and we we're just like, nope, moving on. <laughs> and so that's a pretty good signal that you completely lost the balance. Lorraine, definitely. <laughs> okay. 
why was he telling us about the 25th and who we true and who we truly are if you said that only now we have decided to spread information about the 25th me so he wanted to his essence decided it was going to do that again any essence can choose whatever he wants to do and it's perfectly acceptable but we as a collective did not want to know that that's why we rejected him and that's why a lot of us went along with the reset we're basically we kind of canceled him, you know, he's just like a rock star now that we talk about, but nobody actually understands necessarily or fully his message. Now, the message is being proposed right now because we as a collective have decided that it's time for us to have this new game in the matrix where we are close to the consciousness of the 25th. But that wasn't the case when he was around. It was just him wanting to, this is what he wanted to do. He wanted to speak about the stuff. It is so cool when they speak about, uh, I'm not a religious person, but I really find it so cool that this man, Jesus, who was living in this very strange time, and not that the times we're living in are, are any less strange, but uh, it was pretty much by himself. There was no internet. <laughs> and he had this kind of conviction and he was talking about these things. I mean, just incredible. At any rate, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And please definitely let me know in the comments if you have or what you think of it. And take care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.